everybody welcome back as you can see behind me the battens are done which is great news that means that the barn is ready for stain I'm going to try and stain the barn before I do the steel roof because the steel roof um, all the trim pieces for the steel roof remember reference off the siding so there's no overhang I, I don't have any error when I'm spraying the stain on it I don't really want to cover the steel with stain or have to worry about taping it off. I already have to mask off the steel wainscoting. And I don't want to have to worry about the, the steel roof. So um, we're tentatively scheduled um, to try and get the steel roof on it in a week, um, next weekend, basically. So kind of look forward to that. I, I hope we can stick to that. I'm pretty sure we can. Um, so I've got a week to get some stain on it. I, I toyed with leaving it natural letting it silver, um, letting it weather, but it is just pine and it probably should have some sort of protection. And so then I thought, well, we should put some oil on it, maybe some just some Australian timber oil. There's other oils on the market that are pretty expensive that I could use. And I thought, well, you know, it'd be nice to have some color on it. And I thought, well, maybe we should have this thing make a statement. So the first attempt at making a statement for the barn is this. And right now, underneath overcast skies, this red looks okay. I thought, man, this is a timber frame barn. Barn's got to be red, right? Barns are red. Well, in the sunlight, this looks pink. And I suppose we could mess around and try and get a better tint or a better color of red that we like or something. But then I kind of realized that, you know, two, three years goes by and the sun works on this because, as you know, there's no shortage of sunshine around here. Um, as, I, as I say this, as another giant thunderstorm barrels in on me. But no shade. This barn is going to be in full sun all the time, all sides, except for the north side. Didn't really want a pink barn in two or three years. So... We weren't really sure if we wanted to make that much of a statement with this barn. It would look kind of cool, but I think red is a kind of a high maintenance color. So, I think what we're going to do is go with a darker stain like this. Now, I know some of you guys are cringing right now saying, good grief, what are you doing? You're going to cover up all your craftsmanship. Well. This will look good. Once this dries and the sun works on it for a year or so, this is going to weather to a really nice um, weathered look, I think. And um, it's going to give a lot of protection to the wood. And it's going to match the trim on my house. And it's going to match Zippy Shelter. Which, by the way, if you want to see pictures of the completed shelter, go to Instagram. I've got pictures of it on there at Great Plains Craftsman. So be sure and, and visit Instagram and Facebook both. There's pictures on both of those platforms that I don't post here. Um, but it'll match the shelter. It looks nice. Um, and so I think that's what we're going to do. So it's more of a safe option. Um, some of the traditional browns just look too orangey or pinky to me. I kind of want it to have a classic dark look and I kind of want this to kind of look old um, quicker than it's going to be old and I think this color once the weather works on it for a little while will give me that. Um, I could have went with a grayish brown or something like that but um, we're going to try and go with an oil stain instead of a water based stain. I tend to favor oil based stains especially on raw pine or raw wood like this on the exterior. Um, I think in the long run it's gonna gonna be best and so that's what we're gonna do no red barn sorry um, I just couldn't bring myself to try and do it I guess but anyway as you can see behind me uh, the corner pieces are on the corner trim turned out pretty nice and I think I think the siding came together Someone asked me how weather tight the battens are going to be, and I guess that remains to be seen. I do have some gaps that I'm going to have to try and deal with. You know, the boards 
are cupping a little bit. And I think I learned a few things on board and batten. You know, as you remember, I tried to put the clean side of these boards to the inside and the dirty side outside so I could either wash them myself or, in this case, the rain has pretty much cleaned the outside of the barn for me. So I didn't have the dirty side of the boards on the inside and try and deal with that. I have the nice looking pine on the inside of the barn. I wasn't always able to put the inside of the tree out. And so what that means is the boards are cupping um, on the outside towards the battens. And some will say that's good because it forces the edge of the boards against the batten. And that's good in theory, but that's not good if the cupping is so severe that it's pushing out the batten. And so I have a mixture of boards on this barn because of that. And I can definitely tell that the boards that are outside out instead of inside out, remember the inside of the tree must face out for the board to cup towards the building. You'll have a hump in, your bo in the middle of the board, but that's okay because the boards aren't cupping and pushing the battens out and causing gaps um, where the battens are supposed to seal. And so, I don't know, I've got probably a few of those that I'm going to have to try and seal with caulking at some point. We'll see. It is vertical. The vertical orientation of this siding means that water runs downhill, right? And so, I mean, it would have to be a pretty hard driving rainstorm to get water on the inside. That being said, we do get those here. And so I'll just have to kind of monitor and see how much or if any water is getting in. I do have some gaps that I know for sure I'm going to have to do something with because they're pretty big. But for the most part, I think it turned out well. And I think board and batten is a viable option, especially for a structure like this that's not insulated. Um, it's pretty much just a, a shell and a shelter, if you will. Um, but it's not stick framed. It, there is a timber frame in there and a lot of work went into that timber frame. So I am going to do my best to try and keep the water out the best I can to preserve that structure. I want that thing to be standing here a hundred years from now. Um, but to answer that question, um, I think generally board and batten siding is fine. I mean, people have been using it for a long time, a lot longer than I have, that's for sure. And so um, in the long run, I think it'll be, it'll be fine. Um, it is the look I was going for. And so sometimes, um, you know, you have to work with what you got if that's what you want to do. Um, so anyways, I'm going to work on staying in this thing. Um, I'll be sure and, and share uh, pictures and video of that when we do that. And I believe the next time you see this barn, um, it will either be completely stained and have a steel roof on it um, or one or the other because there's a little bit of a mix up on the stain right now. So I'm not sure how much of it I can get. Um, so anyways, it's coming along nicely. Um, man, I think we might even get this thing dried in before winter. Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, thanks for watching as always. And again, like I said before, be sure and uh, go over and check out Instagram and Facebook both. And be sure and like the video if you like what we're doing around here. Subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. Um, share the video with your friends. You know we want to keep this journey going as long as we can. Um, lots of stuff to come, you know, um, lots of stuff to do to the barn still and, and lots of activities in the barn when it's done. So um, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I always say that and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. So big stuff coming up in a week or so. This is what we've been waiting for. We'll see you then.